This is episode 68 of our Road to Unicum, and by popular vote, we review the T20. This is the Tier 7 American Medium Tank in World of Tanks. We're going to look at a pair of battles. First up is a Tier 8 Province, and then we're going to follow that with a Tier 9 Lakefield Battle, so you can see this tank being played as bottom tier. The province map has been somewhat controversial. Certainly the pre-1.0 version was very ill-suited to high tiers. I think this map has a lot of interesting complexity that uh, players haven't yet kind of sorted out how to play. Uh, certainly th there is one valid critique of this map and it's that the ground floor, that big field in the middle, is pretty much a huge kill zone and there's no reason to ever go across the five and six lanes. Uh, that being said, you can play the edges, the four and seven lanes on the ground floor. I consider that something to do only in the later game because it's too easy to get trapped down there if you go early game but you can use it late game to flank up near the opponent's spawn position and i think what makes this map very interesting is the amount of crossfire that happens between the two three plateau and the eight nine plateau and that's really i think what has made a lot of players struggle with this map is the fact that you've got to keep your head on a swivel and keep in mind your exposure from both directions now on this map from either side whether you're on the northeast spawn or the southwest spawn one thing you want to do if you're in a fast light tank or medium tank is try to get up on the ramp and then you know sit behind a bush so you have the soft cover but spot their slower tanks that are trying to cross the east-west lanes either the b lane from this side or the hj lane from the other side you see a tree just got knocked down there but unfortunately that player is probably just outside of my spotting range or far enough that you know even if they're they don't have meaningful camo i'm not going to spot them now the main thing you can do here early is try to catch those tanks that are going up the ramp like that tiger one uh, because there is going to be a period of time where you know if you've got pretty pretty good vision like 445 meters of vision or more you can spot heavy tanks as they turn that corner now granted if i were at a heavy tank and i want to go up like that tiger one was on the other team i would hope that there would be a friendly player to counter spot me and then once you know opposing lights or mediums are pushed back then you can turn and go up that hairpin loop it applies on both sides now it turns out on our side our team is very heavily over camping on this map and so this is one of the situations where my platoon mates batty cakes and i are going to have to make up for a poor platoon by our team now the one danger you have when you're going up these ramps like in this case here it's possible to be spotted by tanks up in front of you like this t21 which is terribly overexposing himself to crossfire from the opposite plateau and by tanks that are sitting kind of toward the top end of the ramp. But just speaking, even if those players are up there, what you can do is slide down behind the bushes and the rocks and just early on, you know, be mindful of when you fire so you don't get spotted. This is great. Like I'm getting easy flanking shots on tanks that are not either not turning their turret toward me because they're looking where they're driving or their hull's fully exposed. So, you know, I'm lining up, I'm pre-aiming before this. Churchill's even gonna cross the gap and get yet another shot in him. So I've taken out a big chunk of his hit points over three shots. Now let's talk a little bit about the T20. A few things that make this tank very effective. It has 10 degrees of gun depression, so it's a superb hill fighter in terms of you know being able to use terrain. And it also has very good view range for a tier seven of 390 meters. Now you'll notice I'm running foo. The reason why is to play this tank, I had to uh, purchase a fresh uh, gold radio operator who had no it didn't have any skills and the first skill that I want to take was camouflage so I haven't yet been able to unlock the second skill to then get uh, situational awareness but because I can't get to 445 meters of view range and I and I want to slot both V-stab as well as rammer along with uh, optics of course optics is a must for any medium tank so um, there's no room for vents the crew this crew doesn't have brothers in arms so I have to resort to using food in order to get the view range to 445 meters what's really nice is you know like I said that that cross plateau dynamic this you know AT tank destroyer is well protected from the front but you know we're able to fire on him and right there is a very uh, it's a very tight shot uh, to be honest a lucky shot but you know as Wayne Gretzky says you miss 100% of the shots you don't take and in a tank like this I've got plenty of ammo there's no reason for me not to pay, be taking these shots even though they're a little bit on the lower uh, chance side because if the shots land they're going to penetrate because I'm hitting these tanks from the side here again that's three straight really sweet shots but I've put myself into a position where I can have this flanking fire okay so like I said the tank has this tank has really good view base view range of 390 meters uh, the 10 degrees of gun depression, which is superb and very common among American tanks. The third thing that this tank has, which is a little unusual for a medium of this tier, or really of any tier, is it's got ninja levels of camo. So 
with the crew that I have right now, uh, without Brothers in Arms, without vents, uh, but with food, the camouflage value in the garage is over 33. So as I understand it, that reduces the opposing uh, tank's view range by 33%, which is massive. Now, remember I said early in this battle, it's dangerous to go on the ground floor along the four and five lanes. So those are the areas, or four and six lanes rather, those are skirting the edges of the field. But in this particular case, Nespati Cakes and I are talking, and so what he's going to do is we, we want to light their tanks in the one spot. Now, it can be very dangerous pushing north-south along the eight, nine lanes because there's a lot of bushes just to the east, northeast of that one spawn where you'll get outspotted because they'll have the first shot advantage. They'll be sitting in a bush. You won't be. And it doesn't matter how good your camo is if you're sitting out in the open and you're reasonably close. So Spatty Cakes is moving up along the uh, six, seven lane. He's going to come up underneath them to light them, and that's going to help our two Arties be active as well as our Hellcat. Now, our T21 is making very good progress here, and originally I was going to go up and support him. He's going to take out their Artie who... He shouldn't have been in that position. I mean, this honestly, like playing already and staying alive is about basic common sense. You want to make sure that there are uh, friendly tanks to be out in screen in front of you so that you don't get proxy spotted, you don't get spotted when you fire, etc. Um, I, you know, I think probably the most consistently frustrating thing I find is that, and I've often ping on the map to tell artists you need to run. And I'll tell them this a minute, 30 seconds to a minute before they even need to move. And a lot of times play, players don't pay attention. And this is like just basic multitasking, right? I mean, you, your eyes should be glued on the minimap, the bottom right side of the map, or at least checking in on it every, let's say, 10, 15 seconds, if not more frequently, to kind of read the game flow, read the relative positions, understand your opportunities and your threats. Now, in this particular case, I don't really want to brawl with a Luba. Now, this tank has a few deficiencies. One, it has a very long reload. Right, so the damage permitted is very low. You're not going to out-DPM anything in this tank, and then it also doesn't have any meaningful armor. Now, uh, you'll notice what I'm going to do here. Uh, what I what I did uh, a minute ago is kind of work up these buildings. Now I'm going to knock this tree over. This is 100% intentional. Granted, if someone's looking right here and realizing at the time when I knock the tree over, then they might blind for me. I, I might get hit. But in a lot of cases here, what I've effectively done is created thick enough bush cover that the Luva is not going to spot me until I fire. Now granted, we're so close, we're only like a block, uh, one and a half squares away, and the Luva has pretty good uh, view range for a heavy tank. But I don't have to kind of move up too much yet. Okay, there, that's what we wanted spotted, was the SU-100Y, and he's in the open now, and this is because Spatty Cakes has come up and underneath him, and Spatty Cakes can easily just pull back whenever he wants to limit his exposure. I probably should have waited there a little bit longer for that shot to aim in. Uh, you know, had I done so, I would have gotten the kill. But you know, we've done a pretty good job in this battle. Uh, it's providing a lot of crossfire. You know, on our plateau. The irony is that our tanks barely held our plateau. But a big reason why was because we were in position to provide that flanking fire. And at this point, you know, I know that they're already fired, and so I don't really have to be concerned about him. You know, out reloading me here. If you're not sure with the RD, obviously you should always assume that they're loaded. You know, but in a lot of cases, if you pay attention to um, the sounds of other enemy guns firing, especially RD, you can get a good sense of where they reload is. So, I, I got my first Ace Tanker Mastery Badge with this battle, uh, 2,600 in damage and about 1,100 in spotting. Just a pretty uh, smartly paid game in terms of leveraging, you know, vision control. And there are a lot of people in this game who you know, decry the quarter meta. And certainly there are a lot of overbuffed uh, heavy tanks and tank destroyers and mediums that have too strong turrets, you know, arguably. Um, you know, and it creates a circumstance where tanks that aren't really built for brawling, squishy tanks like the T20 or a lot of squishier lights or mediums, it kind of puts them at a disadvantage. And you can see this in the global win rates when you look at the squishier tanks, they tend to drop. But that being said, I think vision is still enormously uh, important and as a matter of fact I would say it's the single most underrated thing in the game including skills like camouflage now usually I wouldn't come mid-road I came here because our 1390 was putting himself in position to get some early spots so we get some early flanking shots it looks like I might have only landed one damaging shot on that p43 I don't actually like going where either their t54 lightweight or our amx 1390 is because you can't safely exit. Like in the case of the 1390, once he's dumped his clip, there's nothing to prevent the, the T-54 lightweight from pushing on, up on him and bullying him, right? But more of it, you just can't exit safely. Uh, what I tend to do from this side of the map is go to the house at D7, and I'm going to show you a trick. You can create bushes on both sides of the house so you can keep your opponents guessing. And then from the opposing side of the map, I've had really good experiences around the... <clears throat> 
the CAD8 area. Um, there are some trees standing up that you can knock down to create a wall of bushes around the buildings. And so what you have is hard cover with adjacent soft cover cover on either side because you don't want to get too predictable. Like I think I've had I've talked about this D7 house that I'm going to enough that I think people who see me in battle. Uh, will often blind fire this bush because they know I have a tendency to come here. Now, there is no arty, and so I've spotted their T95, which is a super scary tank, but, you know, there's really not much we're going to be able to do because of his position. Uh, you know, this, by the way, there, I took my time aiming in because sitting in the bush, I knew the T54 lightweight couldn't see me, and he was, like I said, that middle area is hard to protect your exposure, especially once tanks push up from our side up to the F lane. If you're in the middle, if you're on the enemy team, you don't really have anywhere to go. So notice, I'm gonna very carefully do some gardening here. I'm knocking over these bushes intentionally because if I now back up toward the southwest, I can spot out from that side behind the bushes adjacent to the building. All right, it's a really subtle trick, but you can make your own bushes by using trees. What you don't wanna do, obviously, is knock over a bush where there are no other bushes around or you're pretty sure someone's looking at you. Now, in the case when I knock down those bushes, the, most of my tank was still behind the house, right? But again, I, I now have bushes on both sides, which is great for working. And part of the reason why I'm staying here is one is to keep that T95 lit. Unfortunately, we have one one tank, the Scorpion G, who is in position where he could potentially penetrate the T95. Obviously, with silver ammo, which is what I run have run with exclusively in random battles. Uh, <laughs> There's no way I'm going to be able to penetrate the T95 from here. Even if he were fully turned around sideways, just trying to hit the upper half of his hull from this distance would be kind of challenging. And, you know, if I loaded some premium ammo, uh, you know, it might be possible to penetrate him. One thing I should note, by the way, this bush here, you can get spotted behind this bush here when the enemy tanks reach the church, right? So when they get over to about where E9 is, they can see you. Right, so you can see if, if I look, you look diagonally up towards where Spatty Cakes is, you can get spotted, and you don't want to get spotted when you're sitting behind the bush on the right side of that, the building, uh, because you'll be very exposed to their snipers. Now, in this particular case, it's okay. The only thing they have is this that IS tank, and he's on the far eastern side of the church. The reason why I'm staying here, by the way, is I'm trying to counter their 1395. I don't want him to provide vision because that's problematic, and there isn't really a better place for me to go right now. So I have made a couple cuts in the video so you don't have to see me, but it's important, right? There's another cut. It's really important to understand in some cases why it's worth being patient, right? Now, I am keeping one eye over on Valley. Their T28 just took out our Tiger P, and so you know we're at risk of losing Valley. The thing about Valley is they can't exit safely without me being able to have some vision on them, right? And so you'll see me do what I did back when I talked about the Progetto video earlier, which is form a bush line down by a K5 and 6 and snipe. But really, I, I want to help take out this 1390 because, sorry, 1375 because he is able to provide some spotting and that could be disruptive later. And then obviously, as soon as I fire, he spotted me. I think earlier I might have fired and he didn't see me. Um, you, you have to, by the way, keep in mind that, right? So when you fire, if you know you're inside the white circle of an enemy player, um, some players don't slot optics, or maybe they've got bad crews, who knows? Now in this particular case, uh, I'm trying to move, notice I move diagonally to the southeast before pivoting back to our base, and I'm trying to do that to keep the bushes, and especially the buildings, between me and that AMX 1375, so that it's unlikely or impossible for him to spot me. Now. Even if the 1375, even if I'm inside of the white circle, it's possible that he won't spot me because my camo values are so high. But you know, you want to play smartly and make sure you're you're moving in such a way to minimize your chance of getting spotted. Because I don't necessarily want the opposing tanks to know I've come back here. I'm, I'm coming back here to help ambush them, right? And so you know, it was looking a little bit like we might be at risk here. And it's not so much that you know, if they take our spawn area, obviously the cap is not in our. I'm sorry, the cap is in our base, right? But the main reason why I'm coming by, back here is I don't want them to constrict the map on us. If they happen to start, you know, if they wipe out our tank destroyers, right, at this point, that's not going to happen because all they've got left is this panther. But, you know, if they do manage to take our spawn point and potentially push down to lighter scorpion or our T10 who went back to base, then they'll constrict us and have better fields of fire. Now, there, there is one thing which is interesting. You can see the, T, the T10 flex, flex back to base. Um, part of what's been really difficult is our tanks have been unable to push past the church and go to the north for a couple reasons. One, they've got a Type 4 Heavy, which is scary. They've got a 252, which has like 
tier 9 levels of heavy tank armor, it's just stupid. Uh, but most importantly, they have that T95 and our tanks that have tried to cross the F lane have been just getting wrecked, right? And so part of the reason why I was staying where I was, where you can see the T25AT is right by that house where I was, so I wanted to keep the T95 lit. Why? If I have them lit, then our players can zoom out in third person and see exactly where that T95 is aiming, right? And I also do this, it, there's like a fine line here. I, I don't want to encourage you guys to be too passive. Like to win and carry games, you got to keep your gun, Garbat calls keeping your gun hot, right? You want to be active as much as possible. You just don't want to do it stupidly. You want to, not trade damage, you want to take shots when and not take any return fire or be able to pull back immediately under hard cover so they can't push you. And by the way, um, you'd notice I'd started to make a loop as if I was going, I was considered pushing Valley and then thought better of it and thought I should provide some vision. Now, the thing about the T95 is he's incredibly slow, right? I could definitely, <coughs> excuse me, survive one hit from him, right? But, um, now that we know that he's not in the middle of the road, we don't have to worry about him for a while. If he decides to head all the way down through the valley, he's so slow, it's going to take him a few minutes for him to even do that, right? And so what I'm trying to do here is help us get vision on this T25AT so that we can take him out. Once he's gone, then they're just going to have that Type 4 and the Panther 2. And then I, I eat a return shot, but up to that point, that is the first time that an opposing player has had a shot on me without blind firing. Right, and it's really important to leverage vision control and to be very smart about this. The T25 AT, he can't really move anywhere, right? And our Striv hits him. It, like, if you want to flank, you it's you either go mid road in mid to late game or you go through city down along the 90 lanes. You don't go on the inside of the city towards the lake, right? You don't want to go down along the seven line because you're way too exposed. There's too much too much open ground. You get spotted a mile away. And what we're, the, the main thing now that I need to be concerned about is where is that T95? The location of the T95 will dictate where I go now. Okay, so the T95 has been spotted right in the midpoint of Valley. Seems like he's backing off a little bit. But what I'm going to do now is go support our T10, right? Because if their Type 4 kills our T10, I'm going to have real difficulty in penetrating that Type 4 heavy unless I get a full uh, flanking shot and I happen to get a good penetration roll. So, you know, looking at the map, the location of the other players certainly is influencing where I'm going now. Again, you know, it's not that you want other people to dictate where you go, and I certainly very rarely let friendlies dictate where I go, because you can't trust people in random battles unless you, you're either platoon with them, or have some facility to communicate with them, or you know them, or you know they're good, right? So you can't necessarily expect puppies to help you, right? But at the same time, you know, what I'm doing is making sure we take out their heavies. Their Type 4 heavy just rushed his shot. I do have a flanking shot here now. Our T10 finishes him off. But even if he misses that shot, I get one shot on the Type 4 heavy. And that can drop into one shot territory, in which case the T10 could switch to HE ammo. Or, you know, it just, it just you know, there's the potential that I can kill him, right? And then, you know, heading towards their base now, I'm going to take the safest lane which is, in this case, the A lane. If I were a strong hold down tank with a good turret, then you can go kind of inside the lake along the B lane and just expose your turret. But in the case of the T20, I don't have any armor, and that T95 will penetrate me easily. Right now, in this particular case, our Striv S1 just took a hit. His job is just staying alive. All we need to do is just stay on opposite sides of him. That's it. If we do this, even, in, even if the T10 were dead, the Striv and I would win this battle, right? But the Striv has pushed himself into position where he's going to let the T95 come down on him. Like literally all this trip should do, uh, stay outside of siege mode, just drive around and play keep away, right? But he did the one thing he shouldn't do, which is drive at the T95 and over time get shot twice. Now that shot right there on the T95, that's of course totally intentional. I got him to burn his repair kits and now I know, well, all I need to do is shoot him in the tracks. Now, uh, the one thing about the skirts on the T95, especially if you're dealing with a low penetration gun, if you're not careful and you hit the skirts, see where that bullet shells right there, that shot hit the skirts, and so it didn't penetrate. So what I need to do is make sure that I come over and have enough of the angle that I'm shooting where it's green, right there, through the tracks and into the hole, and then that does the magic combination of both tracking him as well as damaging him. And at this point, you know, the game's pretty much over. Even if the T10 weren't alive, it was just 1v1, I could just sit here and do this for days. Now, what a part of what I can't figure out is why he repaired slightly faster that time compared to the times, but um, I mean, maybe it was an issue of, of the driver not reacting the moment that his 
tracks for repair, but the thing is, like, even though my reload is slow, it's fast enough for me able to track him just after he repairs, right? And so this, like I said, this is the best possible shot to take. In general, if you can shoot a, a tracking shot and damage the target, you'll want to do that. But if it's a far away shot, you know, and you might miss, then what you'll want to do instead is make sure you hit for damage first. That's almost always a priority. Uh, but in some cases, if you can both track and damage him, that's that's the magic duo. So I deal over 3,100 damage. Didn't necessarily do a lot till late game, but in that case, just played it smart. Now, I will be asking for your guys' feedback. If you go to my channel page, youtube.com slash Tallgrim slash community, or just click on the community tab, I will be posting polls to find out from you guys which tanks you want to find, uh, you want me to, to cover next. And please, you know, vote and provide comments. And so it gives me an idea of what you guys are looking for. Uh, also, you can sponsor or join my channel as a member if you wish, but the most important, or I say most efficient way if you want to uh, donate to me is to do through as a Patreon. Thanks a lot. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.